Welcome to the second of our fluorescence in situ hybridization tutorials. In this video, the emphasis will be on hybridization to single genes and other small targets ranging in size from 2 to 7 kb. This procedure is useful for localizing single genes to a chromosomal region and for determining the copy number and position of DNA type transposable elements and transgenes. It's assumed that the viewer is familiar with basic FISH procedures. Background material for this presentation can be found in the introductory video and procedures manual. Links to both are available on the current video page. Working with very small targets is a challenge because there is simply less signal available. If you're having trouble getting good signals using the large target protocol, try the procedures presented here. The remainder of this video will focus on modifications to the basic FISH protocol that help optimize signal strength. The topics covered include probe design and production, cell preparation, hybridization, and image processing. Helpful hints for these subjects will be presented at the end of the video. Let's begin with the probe. The following tenets of probe specificity were stressed for large target fish, but are critical when working with small targets. One, the probe sequence must be target specific with homology to no other DNA sequence. Two, make certain that repetitive elements are absent. Use programs designed to identify and locate them. And three, if cross-hybridization of target and non-target intron sequence is a concern, the probe can be made using unmasked exon sequence or cDNA. With regard to choosing a fluorochrome, small targets need all the signal strength possible, so red is the color of choice. Probes labeled with green can then be used for reference marker identification. As for making the probe, increasing the amount of DNA polymerase I in the NIC translation reaction results in better fluorochrome DNTP incorporation into the probe. Additional information on this subject is provided in the hints section. When it comes to visualizing small target fish signals, starting with a good cell preparation is just as important as having a good probe. The introductory video provided guidelines for judging the results of the root tip digestion step. When working with small targets, strive for the best cell preparation possible. Little or no cytoplasm visible around the chromosomes. If you see cytoplasm when viewing the slides at 10x magnification, anticipate considerably more in the respective fish image. Because the presence of cellular debris can physically block hybridization, the post-digestion steps were modified to provide a cleaner cell preparation, as shown in the following video clip. As in the large target fish protocol, the digested meristem tissue is rinsed twice with 70% ethanol. However, instead of separating the tissue directly in separating solution, for small target fish, the rinse tissue is broken and dispersed in 70% ethanol using a blunted dissecting probe. This procedure may also be used for large target fish. The tubes are then centrifuged at 2000 RPM to pellet the cells. After centrifugation, the ethanol is poured off carefully. Excess fluid is removed by blotting the rim. If desired, the remaining ethanol may be removed with a non-filtered pipette tip. After the addition of spreading solution, the cells are resuspended and dropped onto slides as described in the large target video. For small target hybridizations, the probe and chromosomal DNAs are denatured separately. This helps with reproducibility and signal strength. The probe may be denatured in a water bath, as you will see shortly, or by placing the tube in a thermal cycler. Blocking solution is pipetted onto each slide and a plastic cover slip applied so it overhangs the edge of the slide. This will serve as a handle in a later step. 
The probe mixture is put in a thin-walled 200 microliter PCR tube. Probe for several slides can be denatured in one tube. The slides and the probe tubes are then placed on moistened chem wipes lining the water bath insert. The slides and the tube are pressed down to assure good contact, covered for protection against condensation, and the tray placed in the boiling water bath. After five minutes, the slides are transferred to a pre-chilled metal tray set on ice and the probe tubes are set in an ice bath. Cold temperature prevents the DNA strands from re-annealing. The probe tubes are briefly centrifuged and returned to the ice bath. Aspirate the amount of probe needed for one slide. Lift the cover slip, dispense the probe, then replace the cover slip. Alternatively, the cover slip can be removed, flipped over, and set aside. After the probe is applied, the cover slip is replaced. As in the large target method, the slides are transferred to a moist chamber for hybridization. It's time to look at examples of signals generated by small target probes. Remember the suggestion to make a cDNA probe to avoid possible intron cross-hybridization? Here is one such result. The DEC1 gene illuminated by a 6.9 kb Texas red cDNA probe is located on chromosome 1, numbered in yellow. As previously mentioned, FISH can also be used to identify the location of transgene insertions. This image shows 3.6 kb insertions on chromosomes 5 and 9 and a smaller insertion on chromosome 8. Less obvious on this DAPI stained image is hybridization to a 2 kb region of the transgene probe to its endogenous gene, UB1, on both homologs of chromosome 5. The hybridization signal produced by the shorter sequence is considerably weaker relative to the background noise. Better signal definition can be achieved during image processing by using the curves feature of Photoshop or a similar application. Curves often produces better results than brightness contrast adjustments. Let's look at an example. An adjustment layer is not used because the signals of interest are visible only in the red channel. To proceed with signal modification, a copy of the image is made by adding a duplicate layer, here renamed as background curves. With the red channel selected, the curves window is opened and the signals of interest are located. Within the curves window, the anchor point option is used the area under the histogram represents all intensities present in the image. Signal intensities can be increased by moving the straight line up or decreased by moving it down. Curves cause signal strengths to pivot around a single anchor point. For example, sliding the baseline towards the right decreases background levels but also can drastically change the intensities of all signals. The addition of anchor points is used to limit change to the region of interest. Background is then reduced to the lowest level possible without diminishing the faintest signal. The strength of the small target hybridization signal is increased slightly and the background readjusted. Trial and error is required. Deselection of the visibility icon allows comparison between the curves processed image and the original. To save the changes, the original layer is deselected, all channels are made visible, and the image is flattened. The original layer will be discarded. Both the original and modified images are saved. We've presented several procedures to help you get the best possible signal strength from your small target probe. As the limit of signal detection is approached, or if the cell preparation is not optimal, expect higher background levels. Also, hybridization becomes less reproducible. Signals could be absent entirely or present on only one of the sister chromatids. The take-home lesson is that whenever possible, the probe sequence length should be at least 2.5 kb and labeled with a size-appropriate fluorochrome.
the use of longer sequences will increase the probability of success. Please pause to read the helpful hints that follow shortly, and thank you for joining us.